Samson, endowed with supernatural strength, fights to free Israel from Philistine rule. Betrayed by his beloved Delilah, he loses his power and becomes blind. Imprisoned by his enemies, Samson seeks redemption and one last chance to restore his legacy and liberate his people. Israel sinned and God delivered them to the Philistines, who oppressed them for forty years. The Philistines, known as the Sea Peoples, were aggressive and lived between the Mediterranean and the Jordan. The Philistines, enemies of Israel, moved inland from the coast of Canaan, establishing cities governed by tyrants. They stood out for their innovative use of iron, surpassing the Israelite bronze in weapons and tools. Israel's progress was hindered by the Philistines, superior in weaponry and military tactics. The Philistines worshipped Astarte, Dagon, and Baal Zabub, with shrines in their cities. Samson, born in Zora to childless parents, was announced by an angel to his barren mother. Consecrated from birth as a Nazarite, he was not to cut his hair and was destined to free Israel from the Philistines. The angel of the Lord announced to Samson's mother that he would be a Nazarite from the womb, dedicated to God without cutting his hair, avoiding wine, grape products, and contact with the dead. His mother shared the vow during pregnancy. In Samson's time, the birth of a male was celebrated for his role in continuing the family lineage and providing leadership and well-being both in this life and in the afterlife. Samson's mother informed his father about the appearance of an angel who predicted the birth of a son. His father prayed for the angel to return and provide further instructions, which occurred when the angel appeared again to his mother in the field. Samson's father inquired about the rules for his son. The angel reiterated that the mother should abstain from grapes, raisins, alcohol, and forbidden foods, emphasizing the child's consecration to the will of God. He did not reveal the future, only urged obedience to the instructions given. The angel of the Lord ascended to heaven in the flame of the sacrifice, which led Samson's father to fear for their lives, believing they had seen God. However, his mother argued that if God had wanted to kill them, he would not have accepted their offerings nor revealed his plans. She assured that God's past actions indicated his protection and future blessings, thus strengthening her husband's faith. Samson was born, fulfilling the angel's promise, and was named by his mother, following the custom that mothers often named their children in Israel. From birth, Samson was blessed and stirred by the Spirit of the Lord, displaying exceptional strength as a child. Despite his potential for greatness, he was not immune to worldly temptations. Falling in love at first sight with a Philistine woman in Timnah, Samson asked his parents to procure her for him to marry. Samson fell in love with a woman in Timnah, a Philistine city, but his parents initially opposed questioning why he could not marry an Israelite woman instead of a Philistine. Despite their reluctance, Samson insisted he liked this woman, and his parents eventually consented to his request. Love at first sight led Samson to desire marriage with a Philistine woman, contrary to common practice and his parents' advice to maintain marriages within their own clan or tribe, especially since marriages often form family alliances. Despite Moses's warnings about the dangers of marrying non-Israelites, which could lead their children to worship other gods. Samson persisted and his parents finally agreed to his wish. Samson and his family traveled to Timnah to seek his future wife. During the journey, near the vineyards of Timnah, which as a Nazarite he should not approach, Samson was attacked by a lion. With the Lord's spirit strengthening him, he tore the lion apart with his bare hands, demonstrating his uniqueness in an era where Asian lions were common in the Fertile Crescent. Samson did not share with his parents the lion event during his trip to Timnah, where he met the woman and was pleased with her. Returning to Timnah for his wedding, he passed by where he had killed the lion and found honey in the carcass, which he ate, considering it a reward for his victory. Samson gave honey from a lion's carcass to his parents without revealing its origin, thus violating his Nazarite vow of not touching dead bodies. During his wedding preparations in Timnah, he organized a seven-day feast according to local custom, despite his Nazarite condition prohibiting him from consuming grape products. In the tradition of Samson's time, marriage was formalized through an agreement between families, exchange of dowry and bride price, followed by the celebration and consummation. During his wedding in Timnah, the bride's parents chose 30 local youths to accompany him. Samson, seizing the opportunity, proposed a riddle, promising prizes of clothing if they solved it, proclaiming them if they did not within the seven days of festivities. Samson posed a riddle at his wedding, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. 
Unable to solve it, his companions threatened his wife to obtain the answer. She pressed Samson, who refused to reveal it, claiming that not even his parents knew it. Pressed by his continuously weeping wife, Samson revealed the answer to his riddle on the seventh day. She shared it with the youths, who guessed correctly. What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson responded with frustration, feeling betrayed by his wife. Samson paid his debt for the riddle by killing 30 Philistines in Ashkelon, from whom he took clothes to give to those who solved the riddle, losing respect for his wife due to her manipulation. Samson discovered that his wife had been given in marriage to his best man. Enraged, his father-in-law offered him to marry his ex-wife's younger sister. Samson, furious, vowed retribution against the Philistines through no fault of his own and began planning his vengeance, capturing 300 foxes. Enraged by the marital betrayal, Samson demonstrated his mastery over beasts first with a lion and then with 300 foxes, to which he tied torches on their tails and released them into the Philistine fields, burning grain, vineyards, and olive groves. When the Philistines investigated, they learned that Samson was responsible, motivated by his father-in-law's actions. Following the execution of his wife and father-in-law by the Philistines, Samson swore vengeance. Consumed by anger from the deceptions and losses suffered, he ferociously attacked the Philistines, devastating the Rock of Atom. Despite his previous experiences, Samson again succumbed to temptation with Delilah, a woman of captivating beauty and cunning who seduced him. Blinded by desire, he contradicted his Nazarite vow by involving himself with a prostitute, justifying his sins by separating his life into categories, some of which he believed did not matter to God. In Philistine territory, the rulers offered Delilah 1,100 pieces of silver to betray Samson, capturing him to quench his rebellious spirit. Attracted by the money, Delilah accepted and then asked Samson what made him so strong and how he could be securely bound. Samson deceived Delilah by telling her he would be weakened if bound with seven new bowstrings. When she tied him and alerted the hidden men that the Philistines were coming for him, Samson easily broke the strings, keeping the true source of his strength a secret. Delilah insisted on knowing how to securely bind Samson, and he lied to her again, saying he would be weakened if tied with new ropes. Delilah bound him with such ropes and alerted the hidden men about the Philistines' arrival, but Samson again easily broke the ropes, keeping his secret safe. Delilah pressured Samson daily until he revealed his true secret. His strength lay in his uncut hair, as he was a Nazarite consecrated from birth. Realizing it was true, Delilah understood how she could truly weaken him. Delilah tricked Samson into revealing his secret and made him sleep on her lap, then called a man to cut off his seven locks of hair, stripping him of his strength. When the Philistines captured him, Samson tried to free himself as before, but he no longer had the Lord's power. Chained and weakened, he faced his captor's celebration, marking the end of his dominion. Captured by the Philistines, Samson had his eyes gouged out and was chained in Gaza, where he was forced to grind grain in prison. His past freedom of choice, marked by unhealthy relationships and uncontrolled desire, culminated in a total loss of freedom. His life reflects the price of sin, moving from internal slavery to a humiliating physical reality. In prison, blind and humiliated, Samson finds solace in what remains of his faith. In prison, Samson prayed to God for the strength to avenge himself on the Philistines as his hair began to grow back, a symbol of his regaining power. Simultaneously, the Philistines celebrated their victory, attributing it to their god Dagon during a grand festival in his honor. Samson, taken from prison to entertain the drunken Philistines, was placed between the temple columns. He asked a young guide to place his hands on the columns for support. The place was filled with spectators, including all the Philistine rulers and a crowd on the roof. At the end of his life, Samson prayed for strength to avenge the loss of his eyes on the Philistines. He leaned against the central columns of the temple, asking to die along with the Philistines in his final act. His story highlights the prudent use of strength and the importance of humility, warning against the consequences of temptation and highlighting the possibility of redemption, even in downfall. Oftentimes the consequences cannot even be measured and are ones we cannot choose. See you in the next video, goodbye for now, God bless you. Remember the importance of remaining faithful to God and resisting the temptations of Satan, for in Christ we have victory and the promise of a glorious future. God bless you. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, 
share your impressions, and don't forget to like.